always an adventure. Today on Gun Venture, we take a look at guns and movies and how actors and stunt performers prepare for roles involving guns. Threat! Then Chris Serino shares with us some of the gun mistakes he sees in movies and television. You know you see a lot of crazy stuff in movies. It's like a self-racking gun. But first, we go on the set for a behind the scenes look at the role guns play in the upcoming film, The Reliant. Well, I'm a novelist. I've written 10 novels, but I uh, went to a, the San Antonio Independent Christian Film Festival several years ago and discovered the best way to impact the culture. And I was writing, tr trying to write culture impacting novels on issues of liberty and freedom and the Second Amendment and faith and family. And But the best way to impact the culture is, is full feature cinema. And so what we needed is a, a, a winsome action movie that would address the issues that are important to me and important to liberty and the freedom movement in a way that would be uh, magnetic and winsome to the culture. And so I wrote this uh, novel, the original novel is called The Why. It's being republished as The Reliant because that's the name of the movie. And we have a, uh, the protagonist is uh, the oldest daughter of five kids and there's a crash of the dollar, the precipitating crisis is the crash of the dollar and they flee to the woods with some of their father's weapons on the outskirts of a burning town overrun with anarchy and looting and rioting, which interestingly is happening all over the nation right now. The timing is very practical. What's it like out there? chaos. Industry professionals tell me all the time, this is the most realistic precipitating crisis for like disaster movies, zombie movies, you know, Red Dawn type of scenario that they've ever seen because they can see this happening. Our culture is disintegrating. And so we're trying to, in a winsome way, address those issues, the right to keep and bear arms, the right to life, um, family, faith, virtue, character in, in crisis, something that's getting more and more rare in our culture. What really drew me to the script is what's going on in America today. I mean, this really deals with, you know, we've been printing money heavily for about eight, nine years now. People are, are tired of, of what's happening in Washington, They're tired of what's happening with you know, lack of jobs, with our education, all this stuff. So I think this, the tension's getting bigger and bigger. And with all this printing of money we're doing right now, and our, our, you look at the national debt, it's at $20 trillion. That's absolutely insane. We will reach a point where this could actually happen, where you could have a total uh, monetary and economic collapse, and if that does happen, you will see riots like we've never seen in this country before. And it has, has the potential to happen, and I think he's tapping into that the way he wrote the script. Well, immediately you get the, the people that are excited about faith-based films. Of course, you, they're a uh, ready audience, and that's our target audience. Um, Kevin Sorbo's last film that was faith-based was God's Not Dead. It made $65 million in the box office. It's one of the top grossing films of all time compared to how much it costs to make. And then uh, Brian Bosworth's last faith-based film was Do You Believe, spectacular film, $12 million profit. And they love this story and they love the subject matter. This has not been done before in this genre. This is actually the opening of, of the movie where Brian Bosworth's character comes in with his daughter. And uh, it's just, it's, I play doctor in here. She's, they've been in a car accident. He's drunk and it really kicks off the movie. Well, the first one-fifth of the film, the kids are defenseless. Run! And there's encroaching marauders. They're trying to camouflage themselves in a teepee and in this strip of woods on the outskirts of a, of a town that's overrun with lawlessness. There's no 911. There's no sh place to go shop for food. Clean water's an issue. Healthcare, well, they have an injured sibling. Taking care of them is an issue, and it's a tremendous crisis. And when the looters leave their home and they are able to go back to the home, they discover the gun safe has not been broken into. So they finally are able to procure some weapons. And we did that this way because we wanted the anti-gunners to cheer when the weak finally had the ability to defend themselves. I get involved with movies because, I, number one, I told you I like the script. If I like the script, I want to be involved. Uh, they don't always turn out the way you want them to turn out. This is my 51st movie, and there's probably 10 I wish I hadn't done, but at the time, you didn't know it, you know? Um, I always go back to a great interview I saw with Michael Caine years ago, and they asked him why he did Jaws 4, 
And he said, you're sure, Michael Caine, why would you do Jaws 4? Did you even see the movie, sir? And he said, no, I saw the house that built me in Spain. We are creating a film that literally would cost two to five million dollars in other hands, but we have worked so hard with product integration. Smith & Wesson has been a blessing to our project. Double tap ammo, Trigicon scopes, and we're integrating these projects into the film, and it helps keep the cost down. This particular movie has a lot of themes in it that resonate with our customers around self-reliance, self-protection, and uh, we just were excited to be a part of it. So here, um, we're gonna be using a compass rifle in some of the hunting scenes, and we're also gonna be using an M&P 9. It was kind of funny because you know I've got I've got a Glock at home I've got a I've got a, a Magnum and I've got a couple shotguns and this, the the uh, the guy and he's got to do his job the guy that's on set with the guns and he came to me right away he said make sure your gun's not on the trigger and I looked like that and I said it wasn't of course so I had it running down the barrel and I said I know you know I still have a lot to learn about I'm not to say that I know everything about it but I'm pretty safe with guns and I've taken a lot of safety classes and I'm actually pretty close to getting my carry license right now I'd sure like to just you know when this thing comes out I hope people support it and get with it I mean I think more and more people want movies like this. I mean, this definitely has a faith-based element to it, but it also has a political element to it, to talk about what's going on in our country. And you hope you get the people that come out and, you know, these kind of movies, th there's an audience out there for them, and Hollywood doesn't pay a whole lot of attention to that. And so when these do come out, they need to support them. It's like all the faith-based movies I've done, too. I tell people, get out and support these movies. Otherwise, it's called show business, not show show. Get out there and support the movies, and uh, people still keep making them. Coming up, Chris Serino shares some common gun-related mistakes that he sees in movies and television.